These are eight NBA players likely being traded before the March 25th trade deadline. Stay tuned until the end to see the talent most likely to be dealt and the new threads each of these players could be rocking in the second half of the season. Before we begin, it turns out 83% of you watching right now aren't even subscribed, so please, if you enjoy NBA content like this, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Number 8, DeMar DeRozan. The Spurs are 5th in the deeply talented Western Conference and have had a shockingly great season, but according to Shams, they're listening to offers for the four-time All-Star DeRozan, as well as LaMarcus Aldridge, Rudy Gay, Trey Lyles, and Patty Mills, who are all unrestricted free agents this summer. If you're a Raptor fan and thinking about DeMar returning, here's why that isn't likely, even though he was just featured in a Drake song. Toronto would need to send a ton of players over to the Spurs in order to make the money match up. Also, from a San Antonio perspective, trading Leonard to the Raptors for DeRozan and Jakob Pertl, only to then give them back years later, might be a tough pill to swallow for the front office. On the other hand, New York has 36 million in luxury cap space for 2021, and they have a ton of young players to offer up. But if the Knicks were actually able to successfully complete a trade to bring in DeMar, then Randall Barrett and the recently acquired Derrick Rose would get a proven star to help legitimize their chances in the postseason. And who knows, the loyal DeMar just may re-sign in the offseason. Number seven, John Collins. Since Atlanta started strong, they've had major chemistry issues, specifically between their two top contributors in Trey Young and John Collins. But last offseason, the Hawks added a player at John's position in Danilo Gallinari, and ever since that signing, the 23-year-old power forward Collins, who averaged 22 and 10 last season, has heard his name in trade rumors. He's likely going to get a max contract in 2021, but it's clear that Atlanta prioritizes committing money to their other pieces in their young core. Teams like the Mavericks, Pistons, Bucks, and Raptors will all be interested in the offensive powerhouse. I could see John getting dealt to any one of those teams. Number six, Kyle Lowry. The Toronto Raptors are in the hunt for a legit center at the 2020 trade deadline. I don't think they'll make the playoffs without one, but they could potentially trade away Kyle Lowry in order to accomplish that goal. It'd be devastating to see him go, but Toronto's guard depth is in great shape right now, and they're significantly lacking a legit center who can move laterally on the perimeter, defend the paint, and grab boards. ESPN's Tim Bontemps seems to think that the Philadelphia 76ers and Cleveland Cavaliers would give Toronto a haul for him in a three-way deal. South Philly's finest, the Bulldog, K. Lau, Call him whatever you want, the man has championship experience and would nicely complement both Embiid and Simmons as a player capable of both initiating offense and spacing the floor by shooting the triple. Lowry's reportedly shown interest in playing for his hometown team, so the trade idea floated by Bontemps was that Philadelphia acquires the elite guard that can help their title chances in Kyle Lowry. Toronto receives Andre Drummond, Tyrese Maxey, plus three picks. And Cleveland acquires Danny Green, Mike Scott, Terrence Ferguson, plus a first round pick. Make sure you stick around to see if I think this trade is most likely after number one. Number five, Aaron Gordon. The Orlando Magic and Minnesota Timberwolves had high hopes entering this season but the two teams have a combined record of 20 and 52. The Wolves have wanted to trade or sign the dunk contest runner-up for a few years now, so I think this deal I'm about to show you would be beneficial for both sides. Minnesota would give up Ricky Rubio, the 21-year-old Jared Vanderbilt, and a lottery-protected 2023 first-round pick, and Orlando would give up Aaron Gordon. While AG isn't an all-star level talent by any stretch of the imagination, he's a very solid two-way player. He's an above average third or fourth scoring threat. When healthy, the Wolves have Cat, D loading, a solid score in Malik Beasley, and of course the number one pick, Anthony Edwards. So Aaron Gordon wouldn't have too much pressure on him to score in Minneapolis, which is why it'd be ideal for the Wolves to make a move for him. Meanwhile, in Orlando, maybe the European trio of Ricky Rubio, Nikola Vucevic, and Evan Fournier could make something happen for the Magic. They'd also get a really valuable first round pick from the Minnesota Timberwolves. Number four, Harrison Barnes. The Boston Celtics have been pegged as one of the teams who will likely make a trade before the deadline in order to better support their young superstars. I know they're on a four game winning streak right now, but they were really struggling before that. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have too much pressure on them 
and unfortunately Danny Ainge has a habit of not pulling the trigger on blockbuster deals, but a minor deal to acquire a veteran 3 and D presence like Harrison Barnes could go a long way to improving the Celtics' consistency. Barnes would provide a great veteran presence for a Boston team currently relying on young players to be the vocal leaders. I could also see Harrison going to Miami, as the Heat could offer up a player like Duncan Robinson to acquire Barnes. Number three, Andre Drummond. The same potential deal I broke down at number six involving Kyle Lowry could happen, but Toronto may not be willing to let go of the greatest player in their franchise. In that case, either Chicago or New York would be the favorite to land the four-time rebounding champion. Nerlens Noel is solid as I mentioned in my Knicks video recently, but that's New York's only healthy center right now, and the Bulls' current center, Wendell Carter Jr., hasn't lived up to lottery pick expectations. All of those three teams I just mentioned, I could see any one of them dealing for Drummond, but keep in mind the 27-year-old former two-time All-Star and 2016 All-NBA player is an unrestricted free agent after this season, so his value wouldn't be as high as it would be if he had two or three years remaining on his contract. Number two, LaMarcus Aldridge. One or potentially both of the Spurs' former All-Stars could be dealt before you know it. Despite the Spurs' success this year, the team realizes it isn't taking four games out of seven against the top dogs in the West come the 2021 playoffs. Rebuilding around young players like DeJounte Murray, Lonnie Walker, and Keldon Johnson is the ideal route to take. In terms of where they'll move LaMarcus, I think there's a great chance we see Aldridge return to the team he was drafted to in the Portland Trailblazers because Portland currently ranks 11th in the NBA in rebounding and will likely look to add another frontcourt player, with Nurkic being out, but the superstar Damian Lillard willing them into contention, Portland's going to need another reliable big to lean on for production. In return, the Spurs would get an elite piece at center when he's fully healthy in Yusuf Nurkic, as well as Rodney Hood and two second round picks. Number one, PJ Tucker. He was in a Laker jersey in the thumbnail, which I'll discuss the possibility of, but recently NBA executives said they expected Tucker to land with an East contender. While the GMs of Houston and Brooklyn have been spotted meeting up, and Tucker going to Brooklyn would give them a better chance against a team like the Lakers in the finals, I think PJ would be much better suited catching and shooting threes from LeBron James while saving the King energy on defense. The most recent rumors are that the Lakers remain interested in Tucker, but that Houston wants a young player in return, which begs the question, who would LA be willing to part ways with? There's Kyle Kuzma, or even Talon Horton Tucker, who'd complete the ultimate Tucker transaction and be a pretty solid return for the Rockets. But either of those two wouldn't be enough for H-Town's front office to pull the trigger. LA would have to throw in a future second rounder and some other veterans. Another deal that could work is that the Lakers trade away the non-floor spacing Montrez Harrell. No hate, he's a great player, but they could trade him away for Tucker and get one of Houston's many future first round picks in addition to PJ. Picking one of these players that's most likely to be dealt over the next few weeks is a damn tough task, because I could see any one of them changing threads before the 25th. But as sad as it is to admit, given he's been the heart and soul of my Raptors for nearly a decade, I have to say that Kyle Lowry's the most likely player that's going to be moved. News leaked that the man's reportedly sold his house in Toronto. That, plus the fact that Toronto has players like Norman Powell and Fred Van Vliet in the backcourt entering their prime, leads me to believe that K. Lau's days in Raptor threads are numbered. I want to know your take down below in the comments section though. Who do you think's definitely getting traded? You can follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops for channel updates and highlights on the go. That's at dflowhoops. Have a great day, and I'll see you next video.